Okay, so here we go on this uh, jet ski repair for the 1100. I've got a fuel gauge that's not registering. Everything else I got working on this, the carb issues, the fuel tank leaking, the trim motor, that's all ready to go, uh, but we still don't have a fuel gauge. Now, so what you do, and I can test, I'm trying to test the gauge that I got from the junkyard. So you have to turn it on, your lights come on, and then you've got your key in and you can power, and you can see we've got nothing on the gauge. So that gauge should go up, unless it only works while it's running. This is the gauge I got from the junkyard. You can see it's in really good shape. The floats are great. They've got all the magnets and they move freely. Um, I'll show you what a typical junkyard gauge will be uh, looking like this. Pretty roached out and you'll notice the, float, the floats are very immovable. They get corroded onto the shit. I can't even move this one. So you have to take all this apart, clean that, and try to get something like this working. There are, inside of this brass tube, there are pieces that read the magnets. See, he's got a piece that he sent with this ski. And I can show you that uh, right here. This is his original tube. And you can see there's electronics that are inside the brass tube at each float level right here. And then the next float would have been there. And, and they read the floats. So there, there are electronics down inside the tube that are reading uh, the magnet when the magnet passes over. I truly believe this is good. Uh, the other possibility is that maybe the one he's got is good, but it did not work on my 1100, which I've got covered up. So I guess it would be advantageous to take this, put it on the 1100, which I'm going to have to put a battery in it, test the functionality of this one that I got from the junkyard. I say it's going to be good. So... Let me get a battery in the 1100 and let's see. We are reading full even when they should be reading empty. The STX has a nice long plug. You can get it outside and get it in a fuel tank and all that other good stuff. The, the 1100 doesn't give you that luxury because this has got a very short cable. But you can see my oil reading, and this will time out. But this is reading full, and it should be it reading worked enough. quite well. With the other ones I tested, man, I just can't believe all these center units are bad. Look, it's going down now. See that? It must be an extremely common. It went another bar. It takes a little while. It goes down. Keep it from timing out. I'll hit the starter. It's going down to zero with uh, the sending unit disconnected. It's going to zero. Um, let me reconnect it. If I reconnect it, boom. See, it's already off oh, timed out on my display. So when that happens, you have to key on and off, off and on, go back, it's reading full when the floats are all in the down position. So it's another sending unit that is not going to be any good. That is a shame. That is a shame. So the only working sending unit I know that I have is inside this ski. The one that's in it now. Um, 
Wow. That's no good. <clears throat> Let me just turn that off. Pull that. Um, I've got to try to get his gauge working. Um, so the only known working unit is in this. I guess I'll have to pull the unit out of this ski and put it over on his. That way I know 100% that gauge is bad before I pull it. Well, I've gotten nowhere with any gauge um, sending unit on that other than the one it's got. The main difference I can see is it has a pigtail on it that is twice as long as this one that comes off and is on the STX. Every one of these ones with the short, so maybe they're not compatible. I find it hard to believe that every single one that I have doesn't register properly on my STX. I've tried them before and they've worked. So let's go ahead and pull the gauge on this one. Now you've got to pull this piece of foam up and you'll have to re-glue it with some glue. There's two 10 millimeter bolts down in there. You've got a Phillips and a Phillips. And then this opens up where you can pull that off and then the foam has got two tens. You've got two 10 millimeters here, here, to do the front part of the cowling. So this is the front and then the rear two, but then you, you've got to take this off with all of the Phillips that hold these off so that you can uh, pull this whole top piece off to uh, get the gauge changed out. Okay, so this rubber cover had two. See this? One, two screws, one, two screws. And then there's a rivet that holds this little nut plate in. Not too much to it. Then this back foam will come right off. The front foam is bolted onto this bracket. So you've got a 10 millimeter on each side because if you try to pull this off, you're going to rip it out of the foam. I learned that from the junkyard ski. So 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, pull that foam off. Then you can get to the 12 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, handlebars on. I've already pulled my two Phillips screws that hold the throttle and my two, and my three Phillips screws that hold all of the electronics for the trim, start, stop, and all that. So you just open those up and clamp them out of the way they went a screw and drop down into the foot well over there but next step two tens four twelves and then we'll see about getting into the ones that are down in there okay as you can see we've got the handlebars off but just like in the um, junkyard video the problem is that piece is too big for the cowling to slip over. So you've got to go down in there. Let's see if those are 12s or 10s. Let's see, this is a 10. Yeah, they're 12 millimeter bolts. There's four 12 millimeter bolts holding this aluminum piece on. And it looks like you're gonna have to cut a tie wrap. So remember to put a tie wrap back on it when you're done. And you can see it's tie wrap they've got this thing wrapped with extra plastic so that it won't rub into the wiring and everything um but yeah so 12 millimeter we're gonna have to put a 12 millimeter on an extension and hopefully this thing will pull right out um if it's like a lot of steering wheels <laughs> they use a puller to uh to get them out but i don't see any place to do anything like that so i'm guessing it's going to come right off but four 12 millimeters holding this steering wheel holder bracket in is the next step so there's the unit out of the ski i had one bolt casualty it dropped down on the other side hopefully i'll be able to see it when i pull this up it wasn't too bad I was worried about alignments and how that would align if it was like a regular steering wheel on a car. Cause uh, you know, 
if you've driven a car, sometimes the steering wheel is cocked sideways and the car is going straight down the road. Doesn't appear to be anything like that with this. It's just four bolts that bolt onto a plate. And there's your piece that secures with a castellated nut and a cotter pin down there. So there's no, there's not going to be any alignment issues with getting this back in. But you will notice there is Loctite on these bolts. Now I should be able to pull this up and off and uh, get to what I had to. Remember there was a tie wrap and I cut that tie wrap. So I should be able to pull this off. Keeping in mind there's going to be a cables running to this, this, and this. So I just want to get enough room to get under to this cowling the uh, 10 millimeter nuts that are here and here underneath. But you've got to get this up, which there's plenty of room to do now. Uh, now that that piece is off, I can get under there. And uh, let's see if we can see them. Oh, there's my bolt that dropped. Sometimes you're going to have wasp nests up in here. But you can see um, what I've got to get to is that 10 millimeter center screen and then the opposite. And then the one right here so that... Um, I can get to the gauge to change it. And then you've got this boot that the wiring is in. It's a watertight boot. There's a, you can see it's got a zip tie on it and it is glued underneath that zip. Or at least the one in the junkyard was. So you'll take that, cut that, loosen this clamp here, push the boot back and get to your wiring for the fuel gauge, which is another tie wrap I'm gonna have to cut right there and rebundle. Um, you know, and it, that's important to put all those back because you don't want stuff rubbing against all the stuff that's moving under here. So three tens is my next step. And then I know that there's three tens holding that instrument cluster in. So let's do the three on the cowling first. So the three bolts holding this bracket, you've got to push this rubber in all of the gauges. See how they're sealed? That rubber seals out like a lip around here so that it makes a watertight seal. Um, so that you're going to have to work all that back in, putting it back in. And this thing, it's a rubber boot that splits apart that the gauge is held into. And that rubber still feels really good, nice and soft. Uh, so then, here's your gauge. Trace your wires. Like, like I did on the junkyard video, you're going to have to trace your wires into this boot. Unplug it, rerun them, and reseal everything with uh, sealant and... Uh, zip ties when you're done Look at that. I'm making a little rubber trim come off of there a Little rubber trim That'll keep it from rubbing I'll have to make sure that's uh, glued on when I go back together I'll take a towel and wipe all this down even though it's covered up. You don't see it. I just uh, that's just how I am <laughs> All right, so now cut that loosen that well, let's get to the wire so here's my wire. I'm looking. Is there corrosion? No. Um, where's the other side of the plug? Right there, look. No corrosion. And there's a rubber gasket in there. So these are water uh, type plugs. And you can see they put sealant everywhere in here to seal this after they tie wrap it. So it doesn't look like water's ever gotten in here and messed with the plugs. But I do have a gauge that does not appear to be working, so I'm gonna get this out. There's my no good gauge. Let's stick it down in there. And hopefully I have a good working gauge with the one that I purchased. The ski looked okay, of course this ski looks okay. So here's the other gauge. Let's hope it works. <clears throat> so, basically, just run it in, plug it up. 
Um, it's got a little, if you see right there, they've got a split in the rubber so you can insert all of the wiring, put whatever piece in that you got to get. So that's what I'll do. I can't do it and hold the camera. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, and plug in this uh, gauge that I got from the junkyard. Okay, so in reinstalling these to get this back in, soapy water is your friend. To uh, And basically I'm using a tiny little screwdriver getting under prying and pushing from the back with the other hand. Uh, with the soapy water facilitates it much easier. Uh, same with inserting the wire into that grommet with all the wires that are around it like this. Spray some soapy water on that. And it'll, it'll be a lot easier to slip that wire. You see, I've got it all back together now. And it does route around this. So you've got to make sure everything's out of the way of your steering when you put this back together. Um, so soapy water, pry it, get it back. And you've got to make sure your fuel gauge stays straight because there's no... Uh, direct fit with that round gauge it can go sideways on you so make sure it's straight when you put it back in okay i'm going to say that was the most aggravating part of this whole job was getting this back in the soapy water helped um, when you get down to the end what you're going to find you've got all these work back in if they came out and then for whichever gauge you were working on so if you were changing this one it would be the opposite but uh so i got this one working in here but it didn't want to go this way. So I had to get this circle pretty much completed. It was a little bit here before the rest of this would pop in. So in other words, you're not going to go doot, 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 doot. You're going to have to go. I had these two completely in with the lips because these are lips. You can see that they peel back and they, they come over and they water tight seal basically. But uh, this one, it didn't want to go and it wouldn't go until I started working the round one back in. Once I worked this one, most of the way in, I got most of this one in. Then I finished the round one and I was able to finish this one. So that's a tip for you. If you're doing this and I hope you don't have to, cause it is a little aggravating, but I've got the new gauge in soapy water, help you get it all together. Now let's put this thing back together. Okay, for reassembly, don't forget your tie wraps. You had a tie wrap here, holding that up against that. Make sure your handlebars are centered. You got these little hash marks. You want to try to get them even on each side and, you know, set them, try to set them where they were because you can change the angle of these like this. Um, so get them back in the right place. Um, I'm ready to tighten down. The harder part was bolting this back on. I had to uh, wrap a little bit of electrical tape around the head of the bolt so that it would hold into the socket as I was going down. Um, but other than that, it's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to tighten these up, start putting my foam back on, <coughs> and putting these pieces back on. Okay, after you've tightened your two pieces, you're gonna have to use tape to hold these together because you can't hold these. In other words, it doesn't wanna stay flush, smushed like it is here. So you're gonna have to tape the styrofoam on with duct tape to get it to stay together so that you can put the rubber boot cover back on and line up the screws. It's gonna be impossible to do without taping it because things didn't fit back right the way they were before. And this is the only way you're gonna be able to do it. So, got all these back on. Got to uh, put that on, that cover back on, and see what we can see. Okay, I'm finding it impossible to put the bottom screws back in because you've got to squeeze this together Make sure the hole's lined up and try to put this on with a Phillips screwdriver at the same time. So I guess to do it yourself, you're also going to have to use tape 
It'd be easier just to get somebody to hold this for you while you lined everything up and screwed it together. Um, but uh, that the metal plate is very thin and it moves around up and down like this. And when you try to screw in, and if you're off the hole any bit, it pushes this away from you, so it makes it nearly impossible to get the thread started. Okay. In order to work on Old Yeller up there, I am getting a known good fuel sending unit out of my STX to put in that one to test it. Um, You've got to remove your knee pad. And this one's already been recovered. Uh, it is three bolts on each side for this particular one. Uh, 10 millimeter nuts with washers. One in the middle. And then three on the other side. Three holes. Then you've got to undo one side of this bracket. And that's what holds this thing in. It just fits in a slot in this bracket. And your fuel sending unit's directly underneath that. Um, you can see it just, see how the, it's got a tab right there. It just slides into that bracket. And then the front part of this bracket holds it all in. Um, it's got another tab that holds it in place there, but you've got to kick one side out. You don't have to take both sides loose, I don't think in order to get that thing loose enough to get it out of your way and then the fuel sending unit is directly beneath that. The other way and the way that I usually do it is I drain all the fuel out of the tank, pull the tank forward and uh, do it that way. To me, it's a lot less likely that you'll lose all these little washers. Like I, I know I've dropped at least one uh, down into the hull. But uh, we're doing it this way because all of my fuel tanks are full and I don't have anything. I guess I could have pumped it into another jet ski. But uh, so now we're going to pull and these are going to have washers behind them too. So make sure you don't lose your washers. We're going to pull this, move that out of the way and get to the fuel sending unit. Okay. I did have to pull the bolts from both sides. To move, there's a big metal bracket that goes across. And it's got some other stuff hooked to it from the... Ah! Uh, from the steering down to the trim. But you get this thing pushed over out of the way. And you can see the sending unit right there. And this is how you do it without uh, pulling the tank. I think pulling the tank's easier, but... I guess that's a matter of opinion. So... I'll loosen the clamp, pull that up and out, and go stick it on old yellow and see what we find. Because I know it works on this ski. All right, so that's my sending unit. Does not change the state of this uh, running on nothing. It doesn't. I checked it while to see if it needed to be running to register. It didn't. So, uh, this is a wiring problem. And those can be real fun to track down. Um, I don't know that I can fix this. Uh, I guess I can check and see if there's a voltage going to mine, what the voltage is supposed to be, da 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 da. Uh,. You know, it's a little harder to get to this one because it's down in there. But um, even a working, a known working sending unit is not registering on this ski. So the gauge has been changed. The fuel sending unit has been changed more than once. That's not the problem. The problem is going to be somewhere in the wiring. Um... I don't have a wiring diagram for this, so um, the only thing I would be able to do is look at the colors of the wires coming out of the unit. But uh, I do know that these have a 
two, two, is it two or three stage stator on them because they were running other things off of the stator that these newer ones weren't. And I guess it had something to do with all these gauges needing power. Um, well, it has a gauge that needs power too, but the stators on those don't have as many stages as the stators for these. I do know that. So the ZXI stator is different from the STX stator. And you can clip a ZXI stator, the wires that aren't used, and run them on a STX. But you can't go the other way. You can't put an STX stator on a ZXI because it doesn't have all the extra wiring. So I'm sort of, I'm going to put a uh, primer system on this one because like all the other triples I've ever built, they do not want to start when they're cold. Um, I've got good kits in there. I've got the improved uh, .050 uh, low-speed jets instead of, the, I think they come with a 35. Um, that was one of the recommendations that, uh, gosh, what was his name and his channel? I like to give people credit rather than pretend that I came up with this stuff on my own. Um, but he knows what he's doing. He's out of Texas and builds, uh, builds these things. So I, I followed his advice and, and it does. They, they, you know, he said they'll run lean with the 35s in them. And so I've got the bigger low speed jets. I ordered those from a place out of Oregon. I can't PJ's motorsports or something like that. They've got all kind of jets. I don't know. Uh, so that's it for this video, I guess. Um, tracing wiring is no fun. That's not something I'm going to video. Uh, and especially if I'm not successful, which I'm not an expert on tracing and following wiring. So I, my thoughts about my ability to fix that wiring issue are, are not good. I don't have a good, like, oh, yeah, I know I can fix that because you just don't know with wiring uh they can be real fun so i know i've got a separate different gauge i know i changed that out the other gauge is right here um that's his original gauge this is the junkyard gauge should have worked his original there was probably nothing wrong with it if you want to know the truth so that's it for this video uh, did not succeed in everything I wanted to do. I'll do a separate video for installing a primer system. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.